Hi folks, here we are again with a video on GIs, this time on European GIs. Why European GIs? Well, uh, you may find yourself in a situation where you want to file a European GI application on one hand and you should know what is uh, to expect here, but on the other hand, it is also good to have a background knowledge on the European GI system there where it all uh, starts from and it anchors better into your, uh, your brain on what is everything construed for and, and what is the reason of one and the other. Now, the, uh, everything starts out quite, uh, quite small and I pointed this out in previous video uh, already and I want to repeat it here <clears throat> so that uh, you have it clear in your mind. It is not that something uh, GI comes out of the out of nowhere and here it is and we have a big success and so on. No, it's a long uh, term game. It is um, a game over over years. Uh, then uh, a GI system becomes known. Well, any business venture probably is not for tomorrow. You will not uh, make a business big profitable business from today or tomorrow. Even Apple. Uh, they had uh, some failures in the beginning uh, until then they became one of the biggest companies in the world, right? So it's a long-term game as with any business venture, but also you have to know that it starts slow, slowly, slowly with, um, you know, identifying a product uh, uh, over time so it gets better and um, it is taking advantage of the, the products of the area of the knowledge of the people they get about uh, the product or they get about the climate, they get about the soil, they understand uh, the temperature, the altitude and its implication for, uh, for the uh, goods in question, etc. So <clears throat> when I t talk, I talk more about food than about non-food, but um, if I talk about general indications, I include generally uh, non-food handicraft items as well, which is, and I will, I will talk a bit later upon it, uh, how is its situation in Europe. Now, in uh, Europe, uh, then, uh, you know, at a certain moment, uh, you start out with a, a collective trademark more often than not, and uh, uh, only then you come together uh, with your with your neighbors and the people in the area, you determinate the area, and then, <coughs> only then, you will get into a GI application with the formation of the association, etc. So uh, that's how everything plays out, but it plays out little by little, and the end game, the end game of that, of that part is the GI. It is only the end game, right? So uh, don't start out with a with a GI. It is not how this is played. And even if you have a GI then uh, it is not, uh, it is the end game, but it is not, it is the starting of the end game. It is not uh, uh, everything is done with a GI, right? Uh, the marketing and uh, the, the enforcement, etc. So it goes behind, but then you have uh, the, uh, you're not anymore alone. Then you have all the organization you have built up behind in order to protect you and uh, protect your neighbors, protect the area, protect the product, with regards to unfair competition of people uh, who want uh, free riding, uh, or even of, of your own of your own people who are cheating on the method of process. Now in Europe, <clears throat> what we have <clears throat> is a long-standing uh, system uh, already, and we have some. How much is it? Uh, Three thousand uh, something uh, GIs. So 3,000 something seems uh, a lot to you. Well, I think it's the double in China, 6,000 uh, GIs. But uh, those GIs, what we have, are long and a, and a long tradition. Um, and uh, well, they are well documented. Uh, the processes are clear, uh, the area is clear, and uh, the long-term uh, uh, success could be a huge success like like Scotch whiskey, but uh, uh, moderate success for those cheeses uh, we have from 
small areas. So they get along. They get along better than uh, without GI, but uh, they get along. That is not a huge success story like others. Now, what, what do we have? Well, uh, coming from a tradition, we had uh, uh, different regulations, one for the wine, one for the food, one for the aromatized wine, and one for the spirit. So uh, this has come together fairly recently in a, a database, has input into a database by EU IPO, and it is now <clears throat> managed by the European Commission DG, DG Agriculture, freely accessible to anybody. And what we have is more, well, let me see from uh, my recollection, we have 1,600 plus uh, on wine, so that is the biggest one, uh, the register. And we have on the food, sector we have 1500 plus on the uh, spirit drinks register we have some 250 251 i think and we have a fourth category a small category with which is aromatized wine like vermouth and mulled wine german mulled wine which uh, has uh, only five uh, registries so uh, in total some a bit more than 3,000 uh, registries on the EU register and freely accessible. You can see when it has been registered and even uh, a certain documentation can be consulted. So uh, it is a transparent system uh, that everybody also from abroad uh, can consult at any moment. Now, uh, let me take two uh, additional annotations on that database. One is uh, we have two types of uh, geographical indications. One is a PDO and the other is PGI. So what is the difference between uh, one and the other? Well, uh, you have two labels uh, also uh, which are which are slightly different, uh, but very similar one to the other. And I think many of Europeans, they are not able to, uh, to tell you the difference about that. But uh, still, there is a difference, and you should know it, and I will tell you why. So one is, the PDO one is more stringent, stringent with regard to the requirements. The uh, process and the ingredients all have, come, have to come from that specific area where the product is linked to, whereas the PGIs are a bit more relaxed with this. So some ingredients may come from outside or some processes may be in a different, from, come from a different area. So uh, there are two PGI uh, PDO. Now, why is this important for you? This is the second annotation. Uh, it may be important for you because in the register there are not only European GIs, there are also GIs from abroad. So there is uh, the recent, for example, the recent, uh, fairly recent uh, EU-China agreement, uh, they, uh, they put each party 100 uh, GIs on the balance and uh, they agreed to recognize mutually these 100 uh, GIs. So 100 GIs from China are now recognized in Europe and vice versa. And they uh, are inside the European register with the same rights and obligations like any other European GI. But not only from China, Mexico, we had a trade agreement with Mexico and uh, there are also some, there's always one chapter in the EU free trade agreement or economic partnership instrument. There are always um, one chapter only on GIs, which has the basic idea behind uh, to support European industry and agricultural industry with regard to the competition and make it possible to export more by having it protected in the other country. And often, more often than not, these GI associations, well, uh, they don't have the, uh, the big infrastructure in order to apply for GI here or apply for a GI there. Only the bigger one can. And uh, with, with this, the support of the government with regard to the exporting industry, that could be a big uh, play, a big support for them. And in fact, it, 
It is. Now, uh, my point here is that if you, at a certain moment, want to apply for a, a PGI, or if you are in that in that agreement uh, among the governments, if your country is, you know, in the uh, in the negotiation with the European Union, uh, and um, they should know your country should know the existence of your GI in order to include it. But in any case. What you need to decide is whether you will be registered as a PDO and PGI. So depending on the one and the other, you will uh, need to provide a different documentation, uh, for the one for the PDO, that everything and, uh, has been linked to your uh, area, and with the other is a bit more relaxed. But uh, I say it makes not a big deal with regard to the end result, and uh, you may always uh, switch from one to the other <clears throat> if you want to. Now, this is about the, uh, the, the database. It is eAmbrosia, and you can find it on the internet. I will let you the link at the end. Now, what uh, is the advantage of uh, your GI being protected in Europe? Why, why, why do you want that? Oh, thank you for a question. That is a good question. And, uh, well, the first thing is here that you will get the possibility uh, not to uh, have to enforce your rights, but is enforced uh, through the trademark office. So if somebody wants to make a, a later trademark, so you have first you filed and registered your GI, and somebody files, oft, more often than not somebody of your area, files a trademark including uh, the area you are protected in uh, and the trademark office will say no sorry uh, there is a gi which is conflicting here and uh, we cannot uh, we cannot uh, agree uh, to let your registered trademark through come through this is one thing the other thing is uh, when you have uh, somebody on the market so without any fi previous filing on the market uh, which pretends to be you, uh, you can go to local authorities and they, can, uh, they will remove uh, this from the market. This can be done by you, this can be done by, uh, by your retailer or by, uh, by uh, your wholesaler or by, by anyone. So the local authorities, they will act upon uh, this kind of, uh, of things. Now, in Europe, I wanted to, uh, to tell you that, in Europe, we don't have only the big ones. They have also the small ones. Uh, you may have known of uh, Chablis and Champagne, but you don't have known of, what is it, Colline or Rodanien. No, I, uh, I certainly don't have uh, heard of that. Uh, that is a wine uh, protect, uh, protected uh, wine area in France. So like this, you will see a lot. You will see also tequila, but you will see a lot of these small ones. My point here is uh, that uh, let, do not let you scare of what is on the register. 3,000 or 6,000 in China. No, uh, it is possible that you will get that. Now, I wanted to say something on the non-food uh, handicraft items. So the non-food, I didn't put this on the register. E. Ambrosia is all about uh, drinking and eating. So the non-food uh, is still in the competency of the member states. So if you want protection in that, you have to go to the different IP offices in the member states and they will uh, take care of the protection. Now, uh, there is uh, some uh, tendency to have this done in the EU as well, and it may come at a certain moment to uh, competency of the EU, but it is not uh, the case so far. Now, my last, uh, my last comment here is, uh, if uh, uh, you still have more questions, look at the WIPO site, W-I-P-O. I will let you also the links. Frequent aunt questions are there, IP offices, addresses, etc. And you can even know whether your country has a, a GI system or not. It is all on this website. So that was it more or less for uh, today. I will go through some case studies in the uh, future videos. And I hope to see you there.